Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you doing? All right. David Moore, Nell's Morning News. I guess, I guess a little different this time. We've, we've asked you about Aubrey, how come he never misses? Just, yeah. uh, just the, the block yesterday and then missing that field goal before coming back and, and hitting that 50-yarder thing. Yeah, yep. Um, the first one, the block, you know, they had, they had a, a, a nice rush, to be honest with you. And um, they just they knock one guy down, and they pull one guy out, and they hit the shoot. Um, so there's, there's a lot of cleanup for us to do on field goal protection for sure. Um, and then on the miss where it hit the upright, he actually he just he just mishit it. There wasn't anything else to it. You know, there was, there were some win factors, but that wasn't the reason why he just came off the field and said he just he just kind of wrapped his toe. And it was really one of his only two miss hits. He felt like he he mishit all year, and that one missed. The other one he felt like he missed it. Actually made it a couple weeks ago, um, but then. It was great to get you know the, the last kick, the 50 yarder, to kind of end on a make. Um, not that he needed it, but it was you know it just felt good to line up one more time and see it go through. And you know playing basketball, you like to finish on a make. And so, just another adventurous day on special teams. <laughs> hey, hey, what's your what's your conversation with him? Like I say, because you haven't, he hadn't missed all year. Yeah. He does in the final week of the regular season. Then yep. you have those back to back. What what was he like? What were your conversations like with him during that period? Uh, you know, after the block, there wasn't really much of a conversation. It's just like, damn, sorry, man, that it, you know, kind of ended on that one. And then on the on the miss, and I went up to him. I just said, you know, I had the operation feel, and you know, what it felt like off your foot. And he just described to me exactly what happened. So it was, it was actually pretty matter of fact. There wasn't like, you know, hey, you okay, man, you doing all right? You know, with Brandon, there isn't there isn't a requirement, in my opinion, to do any of that. Um, but to go up back on the field one more time, and you know, coach gave us one more chance was was a good way to end. I thought. All right, so four star telegram. Yeah. After last year in Washington, did you go think, oh, here we go again? No. Yeah. I, I guess, yeah, last year, what, Brett missed one. Yeah, I didn't think about I it until you brought that, it up, that's really. That's what that's what that's yeah. Started. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't thought about that actually until you just brought it up, to be honest with you. Yeah. I just think, you know, the feeling with Brandon is, I, I don't, I don't, I don't ever feel mentally that he ever goes there. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, and, you know, going into it, I know people have alluded to, you know, you're kind of relieved to get a make or, you know, a miss kind of under his belt. <laughs> the answer is not, not really. I mean, we don't really think about however many row it was. It was you go out there and you're trying to make every kick. And there isn't a stress that I felt or that he's felt on trying to keep the streak going. Um, it honestly is. And I know it's coach because, you know, this is the next kick and we want to make it. And, you know, we missed it and we were upset. <laughs> so there wasn't any um, relief on kind of you know, missing one. I don't feel like we feel like that at all. Uh, John Tyler, for the ESPN. When you guys block a kick, uh, like a pun, or even a field goal attempt, do you find like teams now become more aware of what you're doing, and that maybe can free up some ele other elements of your either your return game or whatever uh, going forward? Yeah, you're talking about the Hendershot block. <laughs> yeah, um, it's an outstanding observation because. For us, when we're on punt, and then for other teams when, when they're on punt, you know, there's there's some typical known rushers. You know, Doris Armstrong is probably pretty well known as a rusher. Even Sam is well known. Um, and then for Peyton to get an opportunity to, to make a move and get a punt block was fantastic. And so some of those things do open up potentially the return game because there's more of a focus on protection. You know, then having Turt back there, there's a clearer emphasis on other teams trying to cover. So sometimes that opens up an opportunity to rush. Um, and you guys might not remember, but Hendershot last year, we played the Bears, and it was probably third quarter, and he got cut loose on a punt rush and whiffed almost like Sam did against Buffalo a couple weeks ago. Um, and that has stuck with myself and Hendershot for now, you know, over a year. And we worked on you know, how to finish, kind of like we've been working with Sam. It was the exact same thing. You know, Peyton missed his just like Sam missed his. And so we work on these things on how to, how to finish when you get through. And so for him to just boom, all of a sudden, it was really it was a return call with a one-man rush, um, kind of deja vu. You know, for him to get through and, and finish, man, it's, that's sometimes the hardest part. And so that was really cool for him. But yeah, there is a yin and yang on the rush and return kind of working together. <laughs> John, uh, sorry to use the athletic. Um, what, now that the regular season's over, I know you guys obviously still have uh, games to go, but just who finished on top of the leaderboard and, and, uh, and how did you make, how, how did all that kind of fall out? Great, great call. There's 
a lot of internal competition this week and even on the field yesterday you guys were talking about I got that tackle you know I got so um, it hasn't been revealed yet but I can tell you the Wanya Thomas won the 500 point club very close it was tied going into the game with Hunter Sam was in third um, let's see Sam was in third JT was in fourth and is Mukwama was in fifth but Wanya got it and uh we have another one that's a big board tally that tracks tackles, knockdowns, and lockdowns. And Nation Wright got it by one over Sam Williams. So it came down to the wire there on two of our internal competitions. And um, it's always cool to chart throughout the season. And there's a lot of pride in that. We make a big deal out of it, you know, at the end of the year, then going into the next season. And we keep a history board of, you know, who's won it and how many points from all my time, even with other teams. So it's, it's cool to track. Um. Brian was just telling us about, you know, this system about, you know, uh, touchdown balls and how, you know, guys give credit to other guys. And you have the leaderboard with special teams. How important are, are, are these things for players, just not even just to keep them engaged, but, you know, for a team camaraderie and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think um, it's really huge. You know, and every Saturday morning we put up the current, you know, standings. And so we make that about a five minute part of our meeting is just, you know, competing amongst each other, which sometimes is more fun, honestly, than competing against another team, you know, because the teams change every week, but the, the in-house stuff is always, you know, fun combat for the guys. Uh, we do keep track of, um, we call them, you know, putting a ball in a bag like the offense and defense do. And for us, you know, to get one in the bag, you got to, it's either a block kick, block punt, a takeaway or a, or a score. Um, and our goal every year is to get 10. Um, we got six this year. We got a block field goal, a block punt, a block punt, um, a two-point conversion with Chauncey, the two-point safety with Sam, and we had one more. We ended up with six. We touched down return. Yes, that's it. There you go. And the score right there. Yep. So the goal is the goal is ten, and um, I don't think anybody's had ten in the last couple of years around the league. We, we chart all that, so ten is kind of like the magic number, and. Um, yeah, so that's another one that we do. Your leaderboard has now been revealed, by the way. <laughs> it's been revealed. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Tyler, it's Mr. JT. You said Brandon didn't really need that last kick, which looked like one of his purest kicks all year, really. Um, did you all need it as a coaching staff or as players with your oh, now a week away from a year ago? The, yeah. What happened with Brad? I mean, you said yeah. earlier you guys don't live in that world, but, you know, the reality is that's – the history kind of yeah. jumps off after the misses, but you yeah. all don't live in that world. Yeah, very much understood the question. I, I, I didn't feel so. We had a conversation, I think it was right about the two minute warning. Um, you know, coach was great, you know, he's going he's gonna to run it, and if we got the first down, then game's over. But if we didn't, we wouldn't be too upset because we wanted to load him up, you know, right about in that 50 yard line range. And so I honestly do not feel like we needed it. But because it happened, it feels good. <laughs> so it kind of was a, maybe a, just a, a positive way to end the game, you know. I, I really don't think, you know, if like Brandon needed it or the, his teammates were kind of like, oh, my gosh, you know, here we go again mentality. I didn't feel that. But, but it sure felt good to load it up one more time. And credit to Brandon. I mean, to miss one kick, really two, you know, then have to stay warm the whole game. And with a minute left in the game, when the game's over, you know, to get back out there and stay locked in and focused, you know, on a 50 yard field goal and the conditions were perfect and to hit probably his purest ball he did hit all season. And that was Brandon's words. Um, it did feel good, for sure. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. Uh, when you factor in all of the injuries and all of the different placements that you've had to do on all four phases for, for special teams, how important has Juan Yates Thomas's consist consistency been throughout the year? Been very important. He's kind of the quarterback you know, of the special teams, because he's a personal protector, which is, you know, probably primary position on all teams. But he's vocal. Um, he's got great energy. He's super versatile. Match him up on, you know, fast guys, big guys. Um, and he, his, his value has been incredible, especially really, he, you know, it's his, it's his rookie year. It's first time, first time playing this year. But um, he's locked in. He's a real pro. And I anticipate, you know, a nice double-digit career for him. Garrett Podell, CBS Sports. John, Mike mentioned before the last Green Bay game, he got up in front of the team and kind of talked about his history with them. What do you remember from that conversation? And he's kind of talked about more downplaying it this week. But what, what's kind of the vibe entering this kind of game? 
Yeah, we haven't had a lot of time to talk about it, but I would imagine what he said is very true. You know, uh, maybe it was good last year to kind of get get one under his belt and kind of out of the way. I think that's human nature that that all of us go through, whether it's you know playing the Rams or coach with the Packers, or we've all probably been on other teams we have played against in the year following <laughs> leaving that team. Um, but I feel from coach's perspective, the message is going to be about winning the football game, regardless who we're playing against. You know, um, I really believe that. So looking forward to a great football game, man. Hey, hey Bluff, Mark Cowboys right here. Uh, John, since you won, we can maybe have a little fun with this. But the opening kickoff, Wanye started out, then Deshaun Wright comes yep. in. I think he thought he had Morton Anderson kicking. Yep, his. yep. He lines up on the wrong side. Of the, <laughs> so I, I'm sure you go through that. Uh, yeah. You know, so what, ha- what happened there? Yeah, we go through it. So that's um, that was a pretty fun way to show the game. So um, once it blows off twice, we got to put somebody else in there. And Mukawamu was the closest player to our sideline. So I run out and tell is that he's got to go tell Nashon, who's the L1, to come in and hold. And while he was running out there, one, he just decided to do it himself. You know, um, but that's not what we want to do because he's a five. He's not a safety. Um, yeah, the nation comes up and, he, and he's holding the ball from the wrong side, <laughs> you know. So Brandon's got to tell him, "Come over to this side." Did you yell out or anything like any other side? No, Brandon told him. Yeah, they they can't hear me pass about the numbers. Um, and then you know, nation wasn't holding it right because he was holding like this, but one of the fingers was covering the front tip of the ball, so Brandon had to move it. Um, so I got to work on some of those things. And there's, gosh, there's so many things that pop up. It's like, gosh, I. You know, I got to work on that. It's like, damn, I don't have enough time to work on all of that. So, um, for the next weeks. yeah, yeah, for sure. But then, you know, then he pulled his finger off it way too soon. He didn't want to get his finger hit. It's like, Sean, he's not going to, he's not going to hit your finger, man. But I also understand from Nation's perspective, like I've seen Brandon hit the ball. I don't want to get my finger caught in between the foot and the ball. So yeah, just um, another stressful day in the life of special teams. I totally understand, like. Everybody else feels it. I know the coaches feel it, and the ownership, and the fans feel it, and, and I feel it too. It's very real. It's like, man, fourth down every every snap, you know, when a lot of things can happen. They block the field goal, we block the punt, and, you know, arranging the bodies, and some guys are in, some guys are out. It's it's it's, it's pure madness, you know. And I hate to say it, but I love it. <laughs> Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Thanks.